Number 69, find the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field at the point equidistant from the wires in figure 22.58 letter A using the vector addition. All right, so please also review number 56. Um, we talked about a very similar type of a problem and with directions of magnetic fields and all this stuff. I'm going to assume that you watch that, so I'm going to work off of that uh, on this video, and the reason being because otherwise this is going to be another 79-minute video, and um, yeah, I don't think neither of us want that. So... Um, let's take a look at, uh, <clears throat> our little diagram here. I'm going to choose a point in the middle of this triangle that's equidistant. We're talking about letter A. All right. So I know that, you know, um, that whatever these lengths would be, they all have to be the same. Okay. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, uh, but what I want to do is I want to know, I have to find the directions. First, let's work with the directions of the magnetic fields uh, produced at this point. Now look at each of the three currents here independently. All right, so I'm going to call this I1 up here. And this current, it tells you, is pointing out of the screen. So point your thumb towards your face. Try not to poke yourself in the eye. And when you now rotate your fingers using right hand rule number two, your finger should be rotating in a counterclockwise direction. Right, so um, as this kind of works, right, it's going to produce these, these, uh, uh, concentric circles around, right? Concentric circles, and they're moving in a uh, clock, a counterclockwise direction. So the direction here of the magnetic field then at that point produced by I1 should be pointed directly to the right. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is just write a vector here. So we'll call that B1. Now, for now, uh, let's call this I2. Okay, let's call this I2. This is now pointing out of the screen, excuse me, into the screen, into the screen. So take your thumb, point it into the screen. Try not to jam your thumb on the screen, all right, because you're pointing your thumb into the screen, remember? And now your finger should be curling around this in a clockwise fashion, okay? So when this happens, you're going to produce clockwise cir circles, right, around this thing. And finally, right here, you're going to produce a clockwise circle kind of like that, okay? Now the circle isn't totally centered, so that's why it's going to look a little off. Let me try that one one more time. That's a little better. So this particular vector, the tangent line there at that point, should be pointing off in a direction like that. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of all that, and it looks like it should be pointing about there. Now here's the question, you know, what is this angle in here? So why don't we take a look? Um, if, this, if this point is equidistant, then what I know is that this should bisect, okay, this angle. So in other words, this little radius I kind of drew there should bisect this original angle. Now there's an equilateral triangle, right? It has the same measures on each side. So I know that this whole thing was 60, which means that if it bisects it, it's now 30, right? So there's 30 degrees in here, okay? Now, you know that if I drew this now red tangent line to the circle, the red circle I just drew before, you know that, and this kind of represented then the radius of that circle, the blue line, then you know that this has to be a 90 degree angle. Now, well, wait a minute, if this total measure here from the red to the blue is 90 degrees, right, from the red to the blue is 90 degrees, and if this is 30, that means this little piece is 60, and again, if that whole thing is 90, well, that means this little piece in here is 30, okay? So hopefully that kind of made sense. All right, so now what I'm going to do is put a little 30 degrees in here. All right, now what we're going to do is have the same analysis, we'll call this now I3. Okay, point your thumb into the screen. Your fingers now should be rotating again in a clockwise direction, right? So you're going clockwise around this. And again, we come up to the circle. You know, we come up to a point here. Let's try to do this in a clockwise fashion. I'll try, oh, that's not going to look good. Let's try to do this centered as best as I can. One more time. Third time's the charm, hopefully. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now that's going to be off in that direction. Okay, so now let's get rid of all this stuff. Okay. So it should be pointing kind of off in that direction like that. Right now, so the same thing, if this was going to be, and this is where you can begin to kind of see, eh, that doesn't really look like a right angle, does it? Yeah, not exactly. So let me try this, maybe. Let's try to angle it over there a little more. Maybe this now looks like a right angle, because it has to be a right angle. That looks a little better. So now if this whole thing is a right angle, okay, and now you know I can draw my little blue triangle on the top now, Okay, and I know that it, you know, I know that um, if the, you know, it depends on how I draw my triangle. Maybe it's better I draw it to this axis because this is 30, right? And that means what is this angle up here? That means that angle is uh, 60, right? 
And if this whole angle in there is 60, and I know this now is 90, right? How many, what's the total now angle between that negative y axis and the red line? Well, you'd add them, right? It'd be 150, right? So if it's 150 and you know that this is 90, then the remainder there of 60 has to be right there, okay? So hopefully that made uh, sense that 60 has to be right in there. So here it is now 60. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image, just copy it over here to make it a little easier. And like I said, all these angles and stuff, I took a little more time in the other problem. So hopefully that, uh, hopefully you watch number 56. So this is 60 degrees. And this we called now 30 degrees. But what I want to do is I want to actually reference the x-axis to just make my life easier with sine, cosine, and all that stuff. So let's just call that 60. All right, and then now we have this... Um, this is B1, right? That's just hanging out. So that's B1. This was now, uh, uh oh, B2 down here, right? And this was then our B3. Okay, so I2, I3, great. All right, so now let's clean this all up. Now, what I need to do is I realize that uh, in order to find the magnetic field strength here at the middle, I'm going to analyze each of these three magnetic fields independently. And uh, I know that, you know, the magnetic field at this particular point, let's say produced by this current is a function of the distance, right? We've seen plenty of problems like this. So I know that the distance there has to be equal to the distance there has to be equal to the distance there, right? So all these you can call little r. Now, how do we find it? Well, we can do what we just kind of talked about. Imagine a little triangle is created here. Now, you know, if the, this bisects the triangle in that direction, you know that if this is 10 centimeters, then this length has to be five since it's half of that. I also talked about that this will bisect that angle. In other words, it'll be 30 degrees. If you know this side and you know that angle, you can always find that hypotenuse. How do you do it? Using the cosine. Cosine of 30 degrees will be the adjacent side, which is five over that hypotenuse, which is R. Simply cross multiply and you get now, make sure you calculate it in degree mode, five divided by cosine of 30. So this is 5.77 centimeters, but you know we need that in meters. So why don't we simply just do a quick conversion? Okay, and that's now the distance. So when we now use our formulas over here, and let me divide that by 100 in my calculator too, so I can use that exact answer. So now what I wanna do here is I want to find now B1, actually. And remember, I'm using this formula here because that's, this is the formula for the strength of a magnetic field at a certain distance relative to a straight current carrying wire. This is the permeability of free space multiplied by the current traveling in I1. Therefore, since I'm trying to find the magnetic field in I1, times two pi times the radius or the distance between that particular current and the point of interest. All right, now I'm gonna do the calculation here for one of them and then I'm just gonna to start to piggyback off of that, all right? So this is gonna be four pi times 10 to the minus seventh, that's the permeability of free space. I1, they told us is five amps, it's right there. And then divide it now by two pi times then R1 and that is going to be 0 0.0577, all right? And I had a lot of coffee today, so hopefully you don't mind. So this is four pi times 10 to the minus seventh times five divided by now parentheses two pi. Obviously you could have simplify this a little bit, times in that particular radius. So what do we get here? We get now a value of about 1.73 times 10 to the minus fifth Tesla, and that's for B1. Okay, now I'm not gonna keep redoing the calculation here because all that's gonna change now, the R's are staying the same, permeability free space is the same, right? That all doesn't matter. The only thing that's gonna change now is the particular current. So when I look at now I2, oh, wait a minute, it's 10 amps, it's not five anymore. So, oh, I can just double B1, right? So basically just multiply that answer by two. And now it's gonna be that B2 here is gonna be equal to 3.46 times 10 to the minus fifth. And there you go, right? So easy peasy. So now what's next? The next thing to do then is going to be to do B3. Now B3 here, B3 is going to now be, oh, it's 20 instead of 10. So wait a minute, I can just, does that mean I can just double my answer prior? Of course it can, of course that means you can. So now it's 6.93 or so. So what I'm now gonna do is organize everything nicely up here, hopefully. So let's just move this one on up, this one on up. I don't even know what that is. Sure, that looks like that. And this is now B3, and that's gonna be equal to 6.93 times 10 to the minus fifth, all right? Now, in order to find the net magnetic field, you know we gotta use a component table to find sum all the X's and Y's, right? So this, uh, let's do this, X, Y, boom, boom, B1, B2, B3, 
I'm going to work with my signs first. B1 is a positive X, and there's zero Y, so I can plug that in. B2 down here, that's a positive X and a negative Y. And B3 is both positive, positive, positive. Okay, great. Let's extend this line on down. Boom, boom, boom. Now let's plug it in. So B1 is just, it's all X, right? So this, this is just the 1.73 times 10 to the minus fifth. Y was zero. Now B2, since I've taken all these angles in reference to the X, you can use cosine of that angle to find the X component of B2. All right, so let's just take cosine of 60. And that should be that should be review at this point, right? I know I'm running through that stuff, but if you do need help on it, I totally understand. Please review then some of the stuff back from, you know, chapter three, chapter four, and stuff like that, a vector addition. So that's going to be multiplied now by um, the uh, B2 value, which was the 3.46. This works out to be identical to the other one, 1.73 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, great. And then the Y now do the sine, sine of 60 times that value of the 3.46, blah, blah, blah. Works to, out to almost exactly three, right? So three times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, great. And then now B3. So take uh, cosine of 60, multiply it now by the 6.93 value. Okay, so that works out to be 3.46 times 10 to the minus fifth. And now the sine sine of 60 and that exact value again, times the 6.93 times 10 to the minus fifth, works out to be exactly six now, times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, we gotta find the resultant now. So just simply add those all together. So I'm gonna add the 1.73, good, multiply it by two basically because there's two of them, and then add the 3.46 value. So here I get 9.63. Interesting how this is all working, right? Nine, uh, no, 6.93, excuse me. 6.93 times 10 to the minus fifth. Add up those y's, obviously you have plus and negative, so that's gonna be a net positive three times 10 to the minus fifth. So if you notice here, right, you're taking this into account, positive x, positive y, it should be somewhere in the first quadrant. So why don't we just find the angle, I guess, first. It actually doesn't really matter. To find the angle, you know this formula, review number 56, please. Um, also, so you have the inverse tan, of the, of the uh, y value, right? So that's gonna be three times 10 to the minus fifth, divided then by 6.93 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, great. So the angle here will be in reference to the x-axis, so inverse tangent of then the three, three times 10 to the minus fifth, divided then by the six point blah, 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 blah. 23.4, right? So 23.4 degrees, and you can say above, the positive x axis, that's fine. So basically I'm looking at something kinda, that, that got strange, something kind of in here a little bit, that's the resultant, here's that in that angle, 23, right, point four degrees, that makes sense based on the picture. And uh, now I'm gonna find the actual magnitude, so just simply take the square root of the sum of these squares, okay? So I'm not even gonna write it down, so 6.93, Good, squared, plus then the three times 10 to the minus fifth squared. 7.5, I guess five. So now the the resultant value here is gonna be, maybe I'll put it in blue, keep it consistent. So the resultant value here, right? It's just the square root of the sum of all the X values squared plus the sum of all those Y values squared, okay? Uh, 7.55 times 10 to the minus fifth Tesla. So these basically are the answers. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I hope this video helps. If it did, help me out, help us out. Subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends. All right, we appreciate it very much, and we'll see you soon. Be well.